What's up, everyone? Today, I am going to teach you how to predict the future. In the last episode, I wired these branches and created some movement, bringing this branch down in anticipation of creating a pad in this area. I also bent over this branch and a couple of others to start forming a crown. So here we are, um, say a month and a half later. So one of the things I was hoping to see was a bud emerging right here at this leaf, the first leaf on this shoot that I wired. But instead I have a bud emerging at the third leaf, fourth leaf, and so on. Not exactly 100% accurate prediction in my previous attempt. Let's start by prognosticating what is going to happen if I don't actually cut anything right now on the tree. Each one of these buds is going to continue to extend. As it extends, it will create an alternate leaf pattern because that's what elms do. This one is already branching out. The shoots that are right here are going to continue to elongate pretty much directly upward. If I extrapolate that, there's going to be this shoot coming up here. So we're gonna have a lot of mass way out here and the growth will be relatively far away from the trunk. But in order to create a bonsai, we want to have growth where it is going to be an outline that starts over there and maybe comes back to about right here. So let me erase all of these shoots and now draw the rough outline of the tree kind of like that in terms of the growth. So the directionality of the tree is to the left. We have a low key branch here. All of the twigging and stuff that will go into creating the top is going to start basically from this point. So if I trace the branch here, but then cut it, that is going to cause the buds that are in this area to start popping out more and give me more branches. So before we go any further with this, let's actually trim the tree. With this branch, if I trim it all the way out here, then I will get the strongest growth from this, which is a little bit too far away for the main branch. So I'm actually gonna trim it all the way back to this bud, which will then need to be wired after it extends somewhat. If I wanted this branch to be larger, then I could wait to cut it, or I can just allow one of these to run for longer. This branch, I want the budding to be very close to the top of the tree. So I'm not gonna cut it out here or here, actually. I'm gonna cut it right here at that first bud that I was hoping would elongate, and I'm gonna give up all of the rest of the growth. Same thing for these other branches that are still here where the bases were wired. I can leave one, two, three leaves, something of that nature. Now that I've cut this back, we can use our powers of prediction to figure out exactly what is going to happen. All of the shoots that are still here or the buds that are still here are going to create new shoots and elongate. This is the next round of what we just completed in the last video and by me cutting it back. So the next step here is to, when these guys are long enough like this, is to select out the ones that you wanna keep, which ideally are the ones that I've already drawn, and then you're going to take a piece of wire and move them. If you just cut them back, you'll create more shoots, but the base of those shoots will be straight. In some cases that might be okay. So say for example, there's a small leaf here and a small leaf and this leaf here, and we cut back right there. That already might have the angle that we want for that branch. And if that's the case, then it's not really important that you wire it. But in the case of this branch, which is continuing the development of our top, we're gonna need to wire it before we allow the wood to really set in there. And the same thing is true for these low branches on this side, because if we just let them go upward and get big, it's not going to create the pad structure that we need in order to create some nice ramification down here. So let me now erase most of this and show you what it should look like after it is wired in this state, then left to grow for a few weeks and then cut back again. After the wiring to move the base of these branches downward and position them or add a little bit of movement, and then the cutback, we're, we're left with something that's starting to look a lot more like 
my drawing of the outline. Let's repeat this process one more time. As I've cut these back, they're each going to issue more shoots, and I'm gonna skip drawing the leaves in this case. Once those shoots are wired where they need to be and cut back, we might have roughly eight times as many branches as we started with on round one. And from this point onward, it's really starts to be more about growth management than it is about building primary or secondary branches. Because after we've done this a few times, we're gonna have a pretty good structure that we can lean on in order to start creating fine branching. And with that, you can really see all of the steps that go into developing this tree. Predicting these growth patterns and using them to your advantage is the point that I'm trying to make here. Because if you can predict exactly what this tree is going to do when you cut it right there, then that means that you can place the branch that isn't there yet right there and so on. And that allows you to get all of the twigs into the places that you need them in order to create a good outline with lots of small little branches. So congratulations, now you are a master of bonsai prediction. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.